No, no, cool. no, bro. You Italian lit some people up here on this podcast. <laughs> and for a while, I was like, maybe you just don't like feet like that. Don't like my bare feet. <laughs> so he gets a DM from Millie Bobby Brown. Out of nowhere. <laughs> Like just sneeze three times. <laughs> I was like, you supposed to fly in for dinner? It's 8.30, where you at? I was just drunk on the strip. Bro, you just hear, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like I'm sitting down even though I was just sitting down. <laughs> I'm leaving all that in. I That's just wanted really to see, nice. I wanted, <laughs> to, I wanted to see how you would react to it. That was great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Uh, you, uh, if you guys are new here, this is the George Janko Show. Please like and subscribe. This is Shauna Delarica, my co-host, and QCP. My my next get oh is that for me? That's for everybody. Oh okay, yeah. that's your thing. <laughs> but more personally here, it's not. But I guess it is now. Okay, question. Okay. I want to get right into it, bro. Answer. Uh, one day I didn't know who the hell you were, and the next you're all over my feed. Uh oh. And 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 not only are you always shirtless and good looking, thank you. But you could cook. <laughs> are you single, or are you just trying to like steal everybody's chicks out here? I'm single. Are you Very single? Now, and, were you single um, when you started, or did it? Yeah, you son of a bitch. No, I was. I was. Uh, you broke up I with was, your girl. I was single, then got a girlfriend, then was mm. single, then got a girlfriend, and I'm single again, and no plan for that for a while. Is that your fault or their fault? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hitting all the hard hitting questions at the beginning. You know, it's a, there's two of them, and and one was their fault, one was not. So what a dog. Okay. A lesson and a, a lesson, but one, you know. So yeah. it goes. You, you, you got a trial. A lesson on each side. Totally, of totally. I, no, I mean, like, there's no room for that for me right now. That was one of your exes. They <laughs> yeah. just pulled up. <laughs> Where you at? <laughs> uh, you're Italian. Are you full Italian? I'm Italian. My dad's a full Italian, and my mom is half Italian, half Syrian. So I'm a little Whoa. Middle Eastern. Whoa! <laughs> I'm half Italian. Really? Half BB. Mm -hmm. Abibi. I'm a I'm a Syrian, so I have a little A in okay. front of it. Yeah. I always get uh, confused by you guys, so thanks yeah, for yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm a Syrian. Belle is French and uh, an Italian. Mm -hmm. and cool combo. We were on our first date, and I swear, bro, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> oh my she, God. We're just ha we're just <laughs> hitting it off, bro. And I'm like, damn, I'm gonna wipe this girl up. And she looked at me. She put her little breadsticks down after she buttered him, and she goes, "You know why we work?" <laughs> and I go, "Why?" She goes, "Because." I'm Italian. <laughs> yep. And you're Italian. And I, I, know, Italian? And I, I thought he was Italian. Oh, no, no. way. Bro. No, no way. <laughs> I'm sitting there like. I just believed you. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, you're Italian? Yeah, dude. I, 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 I didn't I, know that. Imagine me, bro. I'm trying to yeah. hit. I'm like, is this going to fucking interfere with it? So the whole time I was just like talking with my hand. Yeah. And I was like asking like, for the waiter and like just. We well, went to the yeah. wrong restaurant. Hey. Like, well, you need to go to my house and cool. Hey. Yeah. Well, when I met Georgie, I mean, he's so like, yeah, he's he's big and he uses his hands. And I mean, you look kind of Italian. Like I just I'm thought. sexy. I was like, yeah. <laughs> You're onto it. You're um, onto it. <laughs> I, I grew up, my, my mom and dad would just like, they'd get so tired of lecturing me. And my mom would just be so, e hey, hey, who are you hanging out with? And I'd be oh, like, yeah. so-and-so, uh, what, what's their ethnicity? i go, Italian, you're good, go ahead. I was yeah. like, what the hell? She goes, we're the same. You even told me when you walked in, you're like, I got a tummy ache. Yeah. And, and we made jokes that your, your dad said, if your hair is wet when you go outside. You're sick. 100% pneumonia. You're getting sick, well, you're going to die. That makes sense. I grew up with that too. But, but you, like scientifically, it's not, apparently it's not a thing. No, my friend says this, but it's bullshit. Or, yeah. or they've pounded it in my head. Oh, yeah. Anytime I'm barefoot, immediate stomach ache. It took my mom until like a week ago to realize that not everything her mother told her was right. <laughs> and she's 56. It's because, dude, TikTok is I was waking like, our mom, parents you know, up. No, yeah. I was like, you know that that's complete fucking bullshit. Bro, bro. She's my like, mom used what? to fucking burn herself under hot water. <laughs> I go, what are you doing? She's like, ah, I gotta cook for you guys. I gotta make sure the germs are gone. And her hand is melting. I go, sweetheart. I go, even the, the surgeons, they cold water, cold. Yeah, <laughs> not, yeah. even, not even warm, cold. I go, it's, You're gonna, it's too hot. It's gonna burn the, the chemicals that are trying to help you. Bro, yeah. does you're, gonna, you're gonna destroy everything on your But hands. wait, you know what? Honestly, though, Georgie, when I first started hanging out. <laughs> you know what, Georgie? <laughs> 
This video is sponsored by Aura.com. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I like to Google myself and see what kind of shit I can find. And there's some shit out there that shouldn't be found, okay? And I've used Aura to scrub the online so they don't have any of my personal information. Because believe it or not, there's some scummy, scummy people out there that get profits off of selling your information. And that's not something you want, especially when it gets into the dark web, because that could get dark real quick. So if you want to check online and protect yourself, have a layer of security, go to Aura.com com forward slash George and use my code to get two weeks off in that two weeks you're gonna find some stuff that you don't want out there and you're gonna want to scrub so the link is in my description if you guys want to check and protect yourself online go to aura.com forward slash George do it trust me do it my man or my lady I don't know what kind of pics you're posting like you want to cover that up leave the stuff on there but just cover like the phone numbers you know you don't want any of that stuff like your mom's numbers out there your number your ex is the, the ex could be out there in fact everybody was probably already calling her let's just move on to the pro Programming because I just I went down a street that I probably shouldn't have gone or dot com for slash George when I first started hanging out with your family and they would always like kids be like your dad always because I like being barefoot I don't know why I just like being barefoot the barefoot band my dad would kill you yeah well <laughs> I don't know like I grew up with like yeah wet hair will get you sick but the feet thing like I don't know and your dad would always be like you gotta put socks on you gotta be socks and then for a while I was like maybe they just don't like feet like that you know maybe they don't <laughs> like my bare feet <laughs> That's I so definitely funny. thought that. I but get then, people at the gym getting mad that they see me with no shoes on and no slides or, or like flip flops in the locker room. Oh no! When they're like, like, I do that too. You go barefoot in I the go sauna. Bare, I go barefoot in the sauna and all around. Dude, we're, you're a dog. I'm like, I got no open wounds. Like, there's no way I'm just gonna get foot fungus. Yeah, I got foot fungus. You did, and I still fucking walk around. You'll get foot <laughs> fungus. <laughs> You'll get all the. Ain't fungus. nobody gonna okay. tell me to I, 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 I keep telling them. I say I'm gonna keep doing it till I get the fungus, and I'll learn. But if, uh, the fungus but if I get is not the that fungus, bad. It's not that bad. What? It's a little itchy. Good to know. You and know? just if you wear socks, no, no. You know what though? That's so funny you say that because I you're 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 folding yourself every time I turn back. You're you're folded <laughs> more and more. She looks like Sophie. You know that girl who does the. The bow and arrow oh, thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's nuts. <laughs> yeah. She's cool, yeah. Like she upside actually, down. Bro, like. she, there's a hole. There's many holes in my wall because she was slinging. Actually, that was my fault, wasn't it? The, the holes in the yeah, walls. Yeah. Yeah, was never mind. She Sophie, never you're missed. Good. You're good. You're yeah. good. That was me. No, but I was actually going to tell you last night. I remember when I went to tell you a story and then you were listening. So I was like, whatever. I'm not telling you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just talked to me like that? You just dogged me like that? Why would you do that? I literally started the podcast like, yo, I'm not going to roast you as much because, you know, people think I'm coming at you. And now you're bringing up behind the scenes shit. Yeah. But remember, though, we, well, we were laughing. We were just messing with each other. But mm. anyways, my point was about the locker thing you brought up that oh. I went to um, Delhi Fitness like right here. They have a co-ed sauna and steam room situation, which was very interesting to huh. do. <laughs> and I'm, huh. I'm sitting there in the sauna. And there's people standing there, you know, after the gym, they go in with their shoes, with their, like, basketball shoes. And this lady comes out, and she's, like, half naked. Like, she's in her underwear and bra, and she's not even going in the sauna. And she comes in, looks, peeps her head, and she goes, just so you guys know, you can't have your shoes in here. Like, mm -hmm. make sure you bring your sandals. And then just, like, leaves. So then all the... <laughs> <laughs> so then, like, literally wasn't even, like, coming in the sauna. She just came to shit on the people in there and then left. And then the and so then the, much better than the guys that come in and just look at our penises and then walk right out or show us theirs. Bro, so that's that's better, bro, bro, <laughs> bro. What's your worst sauna experience ever? Oh, I have a really bad like like shower experience in the in the uh, gym. What happens? Sauna, nothing crazy. The recently there was this one guy who was standing there, sitting. No, there. no, 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 wait, wait, no, I, no, no, no. Forget the, forget, forget the sauna. You don't want the go light back one right into the shower. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We'll go back to the sauna. Yeah, you're I right. I just want to hear this you're one. Right. Uh, I'm at my home gym. I'm from North Charlotte, North Carolina originally. And I'm at like a Lifetime Fitness, which is like the nice, it's pretty yeah. nice gym. It's like yeah. Equinox, but like big. It's huge, actually. And yeah, they're fucking crazy. It's like the only one in the whole city. And I'm in the shower. I've got my towel over the door. <laughs> Two towels over the to door. To let people know. Yeah, I'm in here. <laughs> yeah, also, also the fucking, the door, you can see through the door. Like, yeah. you could see if someone's in there. You yeah. Oh, don't. Don't forget to mention that the shower is uh, running is is from the ceiling. <laughs> so <laughs> so you can you can see it coming down. The towels are over. I'm in it, and this guy who looks like ah uh, the guy I can't remember his name from Toy Story who makes the toys the really yeah. scary yes, looking guy. Yes 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 well, with the yes with the, the glasses. Yeah. You know the really fucking creepy looking. I mean, bro, guy he's a toy maker. Story. He can't be. <laughs> he is it the goth one or different? Uh, no no the guy oh, who the one who, that makes the Andy. guy who makes them. Okay. Like with his fucking binoculars and shit, like mm -hmm. 
She's on it. Yeah, yeah. I know that scene way too well, yeah. So, By the way, I like how you morphed into the character. You just yeah, went like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty fucker. Uh, but this guy opens up my door, just gives me a nice look up and down. No. Right? So then I kind of froze. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. And Aww. I didn't do anything. So I like went into, the, I went into the locker room. I like told one of the trainers. I was like, guys, I, I think there's, this guy's you know, being really whatever. And People are telling um, Yeah. So then I walk out and there's these like young guys going in, like probably 16 that I told them. I was like, guys, be careful. There's this guy in there. <laughs> and they told me, they're like, oh, we know. Right? The and toy then, maker, right? No, they, <laughs> literally. Like, we know this. We know who you're talking about, right? So then I was like, wait, what? So I talked to all of them. They made a group chat with me and like 15 like underage dudes from <laughs> Charlotte who had had like something go wrong with him or like had some experience with him. And then I was like, it took one 19 year old for him to fuck up with mm. to then get in trouble for it because none of them said anything. Right. And there were like 15 people. And then I put it on my story and I had like a decent following at the time. And then I saw... Um, I got a bunch of replies from people all around the city saying he was at my gym. He was at my gym. <laughs> He's just clocking he into these gyms just Bro, to look at the shower. Isn't that nuts? It's nuts. And I was like, he does not fucking work out. This guy's like 300 pounds. Right. Like, sorry, not shit talking, but he clearly just would go in, go to the sauna, go to the locker room, do his shit, and leave. And I Bro, was like, can wow. I ask, what made you not punch him straight in the nose? <laughs> Bro, because, oh my God, like, in retrospective, oh wow, the shit that I would like, I'm, I'm sitting there like fucking shadow boxing this guy in my <laughs> dreams. <laughs> But like, but like in that moment, like you don't expect that to happen. Yeah. Somebody to open up your shower door and just kind of like freeze and look at you. You, you literally don't know what to do. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't, cause I wasn't, then and now, oh my God, please do it again. Somebody please do that again yeah. to me because you're going to get fucking clocked yeah. so fast. Now when you're showering, because you're like, every, yeah, every time I'm showering he now, like, he always has a I'm fist sitting ready. there like, I'm, I'm washing myself. I'm like, like just <laughs> these quick little like practicing, like looking behind my back. But like, yeah, you got to be careful. The gyms are fucking scary. What would you do well, if like. He opened up the door, looked you up and down, and went, ugh, <laughs> barefoot? And he just fucking <laughs> closes the door? <laughs> You're not oh worried about any fungus? I, I would honestly be, I'd be, I'd be happy. Did yeah. he ever get in trouble? Oh my God, I went to the fucking police. <laughs> I did so many things to get this guy <laughs> just too, kicked out of the fucking gym. Yeah. And months later, I like messaged the group chat of the 15 victims. Hey man, like, you're still in a group chat with a bunch of 15 year olds. You should probably ditch it. You're trying to I save was, them. I was trying to save these kids' life. <laughs> he was a hero, bro. <laughs> Dude, without me, they would it would have kept happening. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, you're literally, right. literally. Right. Yeah. And uh, they were like, no, he's still there. And then I felt so defeated. I was like, no. Did he kick him out? No way. Did he kick him out? I'm, I'm, and like, I didn't even go into details. Like this guy offered them money to like shower with him and send him pictures and all this stuff. And like, they and he all, didn't get kicked out? And he didn't get kicked out. Why? He should have his I went, I went membership. to the fucking corporate and everything. Crazy. Hey, dude, Crazy. that's so funny. He paid, he wanted to pay them to shower with them underage. And she goes, they should have taken his membership. <laughs> no, jail. Yeah. Jail. No, yeah. no the, police, the police came. He, the police came. They, they would have probably been able to do something, but he left. So it was like too late or some uh, shit. It's it, only if they had his number, address, <laughs> oh, how credit crazy card is information. That? Like, like they don't have all of his information. Like he doesn't go there and go to the sauna all day, every day. And he's back. That's crazy. He's back. Technically. Oh, literally. I mean, no, they, they could have waited for the I next time he came and done it. But it was like, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, why do, I, why do I have to investigate? I'm like, can you guys, you guys can arrest the pedo here? Mm. Like, Damn. That's but, should have beat him up. Too bad. I should have. Fuck. Let's talk, <laughs> about, let's talk about you, man. I felt like we kind of just, we took a little fun detour. <laughs> just a little detour. <laughs> a little fun detour. What's really up? random one. Let's, I want to get to know a little bit before you came onto social media. What was, what was your life like? What's your family like? What, what, yeah. where was, what um, was, what I, have, I have a, I have a pretty random, interesting story. So it all began in high school. I was my SoundCloud rapper. I was the SoundCloud rapper. You do music? School. Yeah. I used to more than I do now, but I'll bring it back eventually. Oh, but cool. are you Wait, a rapper? You You're a rapper? I would say more. Yeah. More rap than anything else. Do you freestyle and or write? Uh, mostly right, but everybody, you know, you, you can get loose in the freestyle a little bit, Ooh, Okay, but, <laughs> but I was the, I was the high school, like SoundCloud rap, rapper. Like, did I really just, <laughs> that was close. It didn't quite connect. It didn't quite connect. Yo, first off, <laughs> clip it and ship it. You stopped it. You stopped <laughs> it. You stopped <laughs> it. Did I just, <laughs> damn. 
Oh, that's so funny, bro. Let me try to find like what word caused that. You no, know, rap. You know what rap, I mean? rap. No, I know, yeah. but I'm like, I'm like, what caused that? Okay. Um, oh, that was so funny. But but I was the rapper, <laughs> and um, I tried to like continue that into college, and like I performed at my prom in junior and senior year of high school, and you like performed at your prom. Yeah, it was fucking so <laughs> random. I just like went up on stage and kind of like my my song was called Jewel. Like, Jewel, like, like a, a smoking jewel. Yes. Ah. So here I am, junior year of high school, with my song called Jewel. That like everyone's like screaming the lyrics. I wasn't allowed to cuss. And the principal, I went to a Catholic high school, literally called Charlotte Catholic. That's mm -hmm. cool. And the principal is like, "Don't cuss, none of this." And I'm like, "No problem." And the crowd is screaming the the curse words like <laughs> for me. And I was like, "Bet like the same experience, not getting in trouble." So then did the same thing senior year. Then in college, I was just making music. I was like, "Fuck this." Uh, didn't go back to college my second year. I went to community college in my hometown in Charlotte. And then I started working at my dad's restaurants. My dad has four Italian restaurants in Charlotte. And they're like the best. The best since like, he's been the best Italian uh, restaurants since like 1995 in Charlotte. And oh, that's so, cool. so I was working for him. And then one of my buddies was like, you should make, you should get on TikTok. TikTok was like right in the beginning. This was like mm. September, 2019. It wasn't really much yet. Uh, I hopped on literally in like two days, had like 50K on the app in like two days in 2019, which was not easy to come by. But I like faked a giveaway where I was like fake gave away a thousand dollars to like gain followers, or some shit. <laughs> and like I was like, next 500 people that like this and follow me enter to a chance to win a thousand dollars. And I just my shit like blew up like while I was at work. And I literally was just like, fuck all you at work. I was like, I'm going to fucking like this is it. And I was like, I got by the way, you're you working foundation? with your dad, so you're just like cussing out your dad. <laughs> no, like my dad's, my dad at all the other restaurants. He like would come for like thirty minutes at the end of the just night and shit. Fuck you, grandma. No, oh, mom. <laughs> so, but like, you but, like, make the gnocchi. <laughs> <laughs> all the servers there, they always like tell people the same story of how I was just like when it happened that one night. I was just kind of like, like, fuck all y'all. Like I'm out. I was like, I'm gonna give you guys all a thousand bucks next Christmas. Like I'm gonna be fucking rich. And all the, all the, one of the chefs in the kitchen told me, he said, you're just like the, he's like, you're like the president of Mexico. He's like, you never give people what you promise. <laughs> I was like, no. fuck. But I told him, I told him, I said like, you guys just wait. I was like, because like uh, mm. the thousand dollars will end up going to the, those who stayed since I've still, since I've been here. Mm -hmm. Cause then like the workers who are still here, like you guys are still working for my dad. But so I did that and then it kind of like started taking off from there. And then I just made like random types of skits and random videos, just like whatever the fuck my ADHD brain pulled out. And um, I gained like maybe seven hundred thousand followers before doing a cooking video. Then I was just what were you? What, were you, what was your content then? Before you it started? was super fucking random. Mm. Like the videos were were actually just mental. Like they were. They oh, were, I thought you started with cooking. Okay. No, no, I didn't at all. I probably had like yeah, hundreds of videos before I made a cooking video, and then I made a cooking video as another skit to make fun of the Jersey Shore. And I was just like, Did you mocking. watch the Jersey Shore? Barely. My I sisters did. I, I do want to start watching it. Like the best. Wait, the they're back. Huh? No, no, they're not back. No, no. no. Oh, wait. That's what did so I say? Funny. What did I say? I thought you said you're gonna start watching it, and I, in my mind, um, I thought. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I'm back. gonna start watching it back, like watching it from the beginning, because I haven't. But like, it literally was the foundation of like everything I'm doing now. Um, but that sort of blew up as its own thing. It was like the first one was like if the Jersey Shore had a cooking show. It was just a skit. It did really well, and then I made uh, the Angry New Jersey Cooking Show episode one. 10% anger. Do you remember like OG TikTok where people, this was like a minute ago where people would make a video where it's like doing some random dance or something like 10% aggression. Then it'd be like 20%, 30%. They'd keep dropping videos. The videos would keep blowing up because people wanted to see, holy fuck, how are they going to get that much crazier? Then I just ran that series. I ended up just, I kept doing the cooking and then, you know, here we are. And, um, it just kind of evolved and evolved and evolved. And I kept trying to change it. And like, as you can see, I don't talk like this. Hi, welcome to the podcast. Like, I don't talk like that at all. Yeah. Like, that's just a part of the video and part of the character and just kind of what I created from the videos. But a lot of people don't even know that. Wow. So. Well, I'm glad they're, they're learning here. Yeah. I, I'm learning a lot about you. And my, my one question that I have to ask is, are you even in love with cooking? Or do you just do that to just try um, to like, is your I, highway? Yeah, good question. Cause like at first I didn't I, I didn't really care for it. I wasn't like making myself any extraordinary meals and I still don't. I don't cook myself other than videos, I don't cook myself like really nice dishes. Oh, you didn't but, grow up like making yourself pasta? No, then? not at all. And, and it's ironic because my dad's a restaurateur and like it has Italian restaurants. But uh but that's why. Because I'm like, I can't I'm not gonna make it better than these fucking restaurants. Like they're so good. And um <laughs> 
But now what I have found a love for is cooking for people, cooking for like large groups of people. So like a few of my like influencer friends and stuff, like when everyone was still in like houses and shit together, I would always be like, yo, like, let me come cook for like 15, 20 people. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what it would be fun to me. It's like, I get in the fucking zone. I'm sitting there for like two hours grinding like chicken parm and spicy rigatoni and all this shit for everybody. Then everyone just like, this is so fucking good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that that's a cool feeling is being able to like cook for so many people and great collab move by the way yeah 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 no i mean most you know a lot of people i'd meet there and that yeah and that space would be like let's do something sometime and and but in general right cooking is a very easy thing to collab on and for me collabing has been one of the biggest parts of all of this because of the randomness of collabs you can collab with fucking anyone with cooking because all you have to do you just put him in the video like that's it you're you're doing something mm-hmm. and you know i'm known for cooking and they're known for whatever just kind of I- integrating both of your uh styles into one video it always ends up being a fucking banger every time there's yeah. a, a cooking anytime i've done a collab and now i have like these we have like the power groups of certain chefs that we come together and make videos and like haven't had a video under like 15 million views on youtube shorts or something and like the numbers are fucking crazy because mm. everybody just loves these multiverse of collabs and like yeah. everyone just can't believe that it's real no you hit the ground running who's your management or who's telling you to do these things or is it just you i have a personal I have, I have a manager um solo he's a beast he started working for me when he was 16 and was like at beverly hills high school like his dad's an entertainment lawyer wait how did that happen uh he reached out to me cold call email asked if he could help me do my merch and he had his first company he was like he was like drop shipping at like 13 like <laughs> oh he's one of those bro yeah and like um and now so so he, he did my merch we did our first merch drop we did really well like two years ago and then um then i told him i was like i don't know i feel like you would do really well in like negotiation and management you want to just take a percentage of the deals and start negotiating and start making your money then it sort of like it ramped up from there the shift was crazy and he is now like one of the most like tapped in people. He just took the the opportunity and just Ooh. fucking killed it. And I'm like so blessed and so lucky, but we kind of created it together where it was like, yeah. oh, I've, yeah. I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours on the phone with him. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's not just let it go because he's growing up. He's 19 now. He was 16 when he started. Yeah. So it's like, I, it's like we got to create our own management company yeah. instead of having to deal with, other parties yeah. and you're both learning the business together as totally, you go as you totally. move and did you and move out here to room with him or did you just kind of do your own no thing? i didn't know him when i moved out here i i had a, a horrific situation when i moved to la I, I i was with this management company the only f- time i was with a management company and they were they went down in history as like the worst ever and i went uh i got to la and i was living in a house with a with like seven other influencers, but it wasn't a content house. It was just a house with everybody that had the same manager and the manager lived with us. And it was a really weird situation. Very fucking weird. I feel um, like it was the whole like team 10 thing, but like it was spun off in so many different variables. Yes, but the only thing was that there was no brand. It was just this manager able to control everyone at one time in one household. Wait a second, hold on. Was this in Beverly Hills? No, but I probably know. <clears throat> oh, this, there was a house that I went to that was like that. This was this was like no one ever went. Like this was like beginning of COVID. The house was not very nice. We lived in like Daniel Cohen's old house or some random shit. <clears throat> and um, but basically, I I moved in there, and um, it was just it was horrible. I made like three videos in two months or something. That I was like this fucking sucks. And I finally moved out, got an apartment, and then started uh, getting the cooking videos back into the motion. And I had a roommate there too who. It has a fucking crazy story, um, which we could tangent into because it's super fucking interesting. I would love to. After your uh, shower and sauna stories, like I, <laughs> yeah. I'm involved, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and uh, so pretty much at that house, the first house that I lived with, I had, there, there was all of us. I'm friends with one person now who I, who I lived with then, who's a good friend of mine, Jordan Huxhold. And he's, he's doing great. He's a model and everything. But, um, there was one other guy, his name's Hunter. And I lived with him when I moved out. So we were just like homies, like he was tall, like tats, just fucking, you know, just fucking was cool to me at the time. And I was like, <laughs> you know, let's, let's, um, get an apartment. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's get the fuck away from this manager. Like we're done with this shit. So we get this apartment and a few months later, um, 
so he was so he gets a dm from millie bobby brown right the actress from stranger yes, things yes so and she was 16 he was 20 i think right so I already it was like bro what the fuck are you doing you know what i mean i was like i know you i know it's really interesting to see like this big of a celebrity an a-list celebrity is dming you but like take yeah. it, take it easy what, was she like hitting on him Totally. Was like, it, okay, yeah. So it was okay. like it was like she reached out to him, and then all, and then he kind of pretended like nothing was going on with it, and and then all of a sudden I remember we were at like a party or something, and he was like, um, and I saw him like come out of a room. He was in the room for like three hours. Like, bro, I was facetiming her for like a couple of hours, and like this and that. And I was like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Right? <laughs> it was like, dude, like this is just that's just not okay. It's just it's never gonna end well. It's, You're it's just, just saving just... every kid around the world, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> and uh, then basically like they start fucking dating and like nobody knows except for me. Right. So th this, it gets, it gets nuts. Um, they, they're together at the time. And, um, and it's just like my pretty little secret that I'm like, I can't tell anyone. And does her, um, does her guardians know or like, yeah. So she's, she's fucking filthy rich at the time as, as she, as she is now. She has like Ooh. a whole house and like she lives. She's probably emancipated, right? When you can, isn't that what you could do when you're under 18? get emancipated and you're no your you wouldn't human? do that unless she had a bad relationship with her parents no she lived like with her parents like she had like her own fucking like section of the house or some crazy shit like she had her own because she paid for everything because mm -hmm. her parents weren't like wealthy or anything when they um when she like blew up with her career got it but um so they start dating and then i finally was like alone at the apartment which is when I, my tiktok was when like i made betch and everything like it all just blew up like i started below my videos it was like it was like fucking 15 20 million views like every other video on tiktok which was the difference maker and that's what really like sent everything up that's when i met my manager it's like everything started falling into place when he fell out of his place mm. and you um, found your niche totally and it was like the best feeling ever um and literally created my company and everything it's like it, it all happened like that but but basically he I don't know if I want to like go into like too much detail about his whole story with it but like he like I said you know the whole age thing was like no matter what that's always going to end bad mm -hmm. but he um started like living with her and like in in all this stuff in Atlanta and um and it just kind of like went to shit really quick. They had like a really bad breakup, you know, to, to really make things fast here. And, uh, and still nobody knew but me. Like they had a whole relationship and still nothing was exposed on the internet. Then one day, months later, she already has a new boyfriend at this point and all this stuff and nobody knows what about him. What age is this boyfriend? Oh, I think it's like John Bon Jovi's like son or something. And I think they're like closer in age. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I would not be surprised if not. But... Pretty much, he he never really got what he wanted in that relationship, which was like, oh my God, I'm dating a celebrity. Like, give me my recognition. Like, I want to be a celebrity too. I want to be the guy who's dating the celebrity. Like, that oh, was, that's uh, why he, he dated her. He wasn't in I mean, it, it's just kind of obvious. You know what I mean? It's, oh, it's just you. like, it's kind of like there's no, like you, you clearly just fell in love with the idea of it than anything else. Um, considering she's, she, oh, you're dating like a 16-year-old millionaire who's, the busiest person you could probably ever know. She's an A-list celebrity who's, who's in movies and, or t yeah, yeah, movies, the biggest TV show. It's like all this stuff. So it ended up just coming full circle. He never really got what he wanted and then he ended up going live on Instagram and no. and saying some really, really, really fucked up shit. Fuck. And like it's all over the internet now and I, was, I remember. Okay, I was wondering where this is going because I was like. Right. Right, Are we getting right, some right. exclusive shit? <laughs> well, it so he was did some strange things. Very some stranger <laughs> things, and uh, really disturbing. I'm not. I'm, I can't. I cannot disclose it. Like I can't. So you're not cool with this dude it. anymore? No, not okay. at all. And it literally was like it was. Ex it was just mind blowing how like my situation moving here, living in this like manipulated household, then moving out and living with somebody who completely fuck themselves over just to try to get to the finish line quicker. Oh yeah, welcome, always, bro. It's he LA. always welcome asked LA. me. I know, but it was like it was a, it was such an incredible experience to have so quickly, yeah. which was like this so, was the worst it could fucking be. Like yeah. I had there's so many random things happen and like even another quick story that was a, a great thing for me of how I became friends with uh like like uh one night with that same roommate, we were at 
it was at like my first like big like TikToker party. It's like the Sway House and all these guys and like um, Addison and all these people are there and and like we're leaving the party and then my my that one roommate he was with his friend from home and Addison like got out of her car and started. This is when Addison and Bryce were dating. Addison like started walking inside, and the friend uh, of my old roommate at the time, Hunter, he like was like I faded his fuck or some shit and was like. Oh shit, like that's Addison Ray. Like what? Sort of like kind of like freaking out, but not really. But she like took it offensive and like went inside and like told all the boys, like told Bryce, was like, this fucking guy's outside, like being annoying and all this stuff. So that they came out and were like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? What's going on? And I'm like, oh, right. Like this is my first party that I'm like yeah. becoming friends with these yeah. people. Like, I'm not and then I'm like, this guy's fucking me over. Like, oh my God. So then I tried diffusing it, right? And he is like my roommate was like, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, you you dick sucker. Like, you, you're doing whatever you can to get on their side and all this shit. And I was like, bro, like, your homie pissed in this dude's, like, floor or something of his room. And he's talking to Addison Ray. I'm like, I, and I, pretty much I diffused the whole entire thing. Like, I almost had to fight him. It was fucking nuts. Next morning, Josh Richards DM'd me. And at the time, they're, they, they were so fucking famous, too. And, like, um, and he was just like, I appreciate you for doing that last night and this and that. And I'm like, whew. <laughs> like, Josh Richards is a good dude. He really is. He's a good dude, and no, he's, he's very great. intelligent. He he's is. He is. He's super cool. I'm really happy to be. Friends he's with one him. of those people where, like, I just watch from afar and pray that he just keeps doing better. And no, better. and he will be. I know yeah. a lot of the shit that he has coming up, and it's amazing. Yeah. No, he's he's great. I got the privilege to sit next to him uh, on a flight, and uh, oh really? We just discussed. My, and Bell was even laughing. She goes, "You guys were laughing the whole time." Dude, he, it was so funny. I was literally. Josh is so funny. <laughs> I'm like, he's a good dude. Our seats. Canadians, got, man. Oh, he's Canadian? Canadians. Oh, well, Canadians are really nice. Um, She's Canadian. <laughs> my mom's Canadian. <laughs> um, but no, we were on our flight and he, our seats were separated, Georgie and I, and, and it happens that his seat was next to him. And so, and then mine was like right here diagonally. And the whole time I could just hear them like, <laughs> and then I'm laying there Boys. and I'm like laying down and I'm watching something and out of nowhere I just see Josh's face pop up. And I'm like. <laughs> Over to you? Yeah, and he's like. And he, he was asking me a question because Georgie had just told him something and he was like, did he just tell you this da, 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 yesterday? And I was like, uh, and I pop up and I was like, yeah. I literally and like, like, that was a yeah, good Josh cool. impersonation. Yeah, and he was- Very easy. I, I, I remember exactly what it was, bro, because he would say stuff and I was like, I do that. And like, it was so many. <laughs> and then he just looked, dude, he gave me like the most like sincere thing and then it ended with like, yeah, man. And if I'm just half as good as my dad, I know I'll be good. And I was Damn. like- that's what I say. <laughs> and yeah, I go, literally. bro, I just told Bell this right now. And I had like goosebumps. And he's like, nah, nah. And I go, bro, yeah, go yeah, ask yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Go ask him. <laughs> and so that's like he sick. gets up and he's like, sit, and you know, it's so funny. It's a red eye, you know, everyone's sleeping. And, yeah. and, uh, and it, it, so the first class is you get your own little private. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The little, bro, the little bro, this dude. Booth. Goes into a girl's booth <laughs> to <laughs> hover over Bell. And the, oh, girl, yeah, yeah. And I, the girl's like watching something. And he, yeah. he blocks and goes, <laughs> she goes, and she looks at me. She goes, "What the fuck?" And I go, "Josh, Josh, get out of her booth." It's like, Josh. And then he's like, "Yeah, did you say that?" And then Bell couldn't fucking hear him. So like, she's like, "What?" I was like, like "Did he just say that?" She's like, like, "Did say what?" And I was like, "Oh my, this can't, <laughs> this can't be happening." He's right like now, over bro. the girl. Yeah, I'm like, what? What? I sit up. I turn around. And I'm like, he's ben, goofy. Yeah, he's goofy to say the least. Bro, are, are you comfortable? My dog's been hugging you this whole time. I know. I, know, I feel so loved. <laughs> so cute. Um, wow. let's get back to you. Okay. So now we, we leave the mom and pops like restaurant. We grow, we go to LA. We observe mm. that some people's hearts fall into the wrong places. Totally. We get the right people placed in our life at the perfect timing. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking towards the future with brand deals invested in you. We have, I don't know if we can mention this, but we could cut, but your book you're, you're working on. Absolutely can mention it. Okay. Um, and then so I, I want to talk yeah. about the future you because bro, I'm yeah. invested and I'm, I'm excited about your career. Thank you. And, and your workflow and just your personality right off the bat makes me feel that you're going to be one of those people that are going to be here for a very long time. I appreciate that. And I, I can agree with that for myself just because of the journey and the intention to do what I'm doing and to do what I will do before even starting it. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, a difference between a lot of people in this industry is the intent because I knew really what I, what I was going to, like, I, I had this idea. I didn't know exactly where 
it was going to go and how it was going to go. But I knew that it was going to go, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I knew that I was able to bring awareness to the idea of what always I told my mom. I remember I had sushi with her one night when I was 18 and I, I didn't have anything going for me yet. Like I was still in school and I was just I was just the rapper and like <laughs> but I knew I was like, if I if I can make this whole classroom laugh. And then I go to middle school and I make the whole classroom laugh. And then I go to high school, the same. And I go to college, the same. I'm like, I'm just kind of piecing these things together. And I'm like, if I'm able to portray myself on the internet in a certain way to hit a wide range of people, why would it not do well? This was way before, this was before TikTok existed. This was before I had any idea what I was going to even do in that sense. I was like, am I going to do YouTube? Um, and how am I going to promote my music? I was like... This is fucked. So like I, you know, it's just ironic. I went on TikTok to promote my music, and I ended up just going off on the biggest fucking side quest ever. <laughs> yeah. and here we are, and, you'll yeah. come and back I'm on to another it. side quest, you, but totally. Yeah, you'll come and back like to it. I, you're an artist. You are going to create something to express yourself and have the people watch it. That is an artist. I Absolutely. No, but on top of everything, you're a good looking kid. You have Thank that you. factor to you that these Josh Richards and and Bryce Halls they have. They have this uh, this charisma that's on camera, bro. I, I, I always make fun of TikTokers because I'm jealous. And I think anybody who ever does is jealous because I get mad that I have to create and build a team and then fucking Josh Richards just takes his shirt off and goes like this <laughs> and makes 80 grand. Like, fuck that kid. Like, right. great kid, great kid. I guess kid. the only thing is fuck now the difference is of, of who's going to keep going is mm-hmm. someone like Josh Richards who has a fucking big ass team around him now yep mm-hmm. now yep and is working with the right people now and those who are not are the ones that don't exist anymore this happens on every platform you know of this. course every yeah. you start on vine to instagram facebook uh and then now there's new streaming platforms that are coming and falling so many yeah. Yeah. it's it's you got to roll with the punches yeah. and you have and, to have the drive and yeah. at least the vision and and all the other things to piece those things like together oh, yeah and but, and the heart yeah. I, we just had this conversation literally on this couch yesterday. We were we were having such a deep conversation, Bell and I, about like now we understand the people that there's two types of people that are on top. The bitter and the ones that are gross to the people behind them because they didn't deserve it and they didn't earn it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then the people that worked oh, yeah. for it oh, yeah. and pressed and got broken mm-hmm. and beat. They're kind. Those Adam Sandlers, the oh, Jennifer Andersons, like these are the people that the Denzel Washingtons. I just got goosebumps thinking no, about I, them I, as I humans. I completely agree. Those are the people that I I admire and I want to be like. I don't want to be in this industry and be around people that are soul sucking the shit out of everybody around them, bro. It just it ruins the art of it and it ruins the fun. It does. I described uh, fame in my mind when I was growing up as a bunch of kids that were blessed with the opportunity. <laughs> to do whatever they want creatively and not have to work a structured life. Yeah. And then when I came out to LA, I realized that this industry breeds, breeds motherfuckers that are, they don't deserve shit, but they act like they, you owe them everything. And it really makes me like, to circle everything I'm feeling is, I've been telling everybody this. In my heart, my new motto is, I know now I can't change everyone's heart. But mm-hmm. the goal is to now not make sure that everybody else changes my heart. Yeah. Because, dude, after a while, when somebody gets beaten mm-hmm. down and beaten down and beaten down, you're going to turn around one day and you're going to be like, you know what? Fuck it. If this is what it's going to take to get to that level, I'm going to rip skulls apart. But I hope you don't go through that. And mm-hmm. I pray that your heart I, gets softened. No, I'm, I'm blessed to feel so comfortable like being where I am and, and the knowledge of... I am where I am in this part of my career for a reason. And where I was a year ago, I'm happy to be where I am right now. Yeah. And I know where I'll be in a year because, you know, once, once you just understand your craft and you understand what people want and how you learn how to adjust to what people really want for content and for, you know, art in general, a lot of artists struggle with changing their art to get the attention, to then create the art they love, Mm -hmm. which is something that's very, that's very difficult is artists, a lot of musicians, but it it applies to every form of art is I always tell people you're amazing at what you do, but try to make it a little out of your liking to attract more people to then have those people love your other art that you love. Mm 
you know, mm. to have them for like open people up to you and your work, then they'll love everything you do yeah. and they'll appreciate the stuff that you might not be able to get appreciation for because of its lack of being like universal. Yes. So I think the same thing applies for content and, and anything is try. I always had, I had to slowly let go of making the shit specifically, like making it exactly how I want instead of making it, how is it going to do the best? And how am I like, I'm like, Oh, like now I know I'm like, that was cringe. Take that out. You know what I mean? Of like, uh, or that right. Like that's hard to watch or, um, let's put more sounds that people want to hear in cooking and mm -hmm. like, um, levels of energy. And it's just like, you're these, always trying to details, find the next, always yeah. trying to find the next, yeah. The next step to just stay on top. Mm -hmm. I literally said uh, this to you Yeah. when we, I was getting ready for this podcast. I go, the one thing that I, cause I, I did some, I do homework on guests, but mm -hmm. not too much. I don't want to mm -hmm. too much because yeah, I, I want to know enough yeah, so we yeah, can yeah. have a conversation. Of course. And the one thing I, I, I did my search and I go, he's always just trying to find the new lane. Like totally. you're always, and I'm glad that you said that because now I know I'm doing my job right yeah. because I do see that. in Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Which, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just have one more question for mm -hmm. you. At what point do you start uh, sacrificing your form of art for the audience? Have you ran into that road yet? Because I know you're like, what do they want? What do they, but it's also, you're the artist. You don't go into a museum and look at a painting and be like, God, I'm thank God he put that. That's there's what a I nice wanted. mix of it. You know what I mean? There's, there's, I'm still, I'm still, it's not all disconnected from my art. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, um, but you know, Realist, in the end of the day, your craft is your craft, mm. but the way that you adjust it to have more people enjoy it, like that, that is what it is, but it's like, in the end of the day, you're st I'm still creating it. There's nobody mm -hmm. that's filming my videos, you know, maybe they'll pick it up, but it's still me behind the lens. There's nobody who edits, I edit all my shit myself, that's my art, so it's like, yeah. but um, creating it, you know, researching the, the content that works and seeing what works and creating your own uh, like lane of it, it's still original. You know what I mean? Of Everything course. I'm doing oh, is yeah. still extremely original. Yeah. I just want to know if you ran into that yeah. wall yet. But um, no, you know. Uh, Before I ask my next question, I interrupted your question, so I want to make sure that you ask it. It was around those same lines. I think I was saying is that I understand kind of where you're coming at. I think because because you're doing TikToks and you have your audience, and which is like your people who are watching you, you're trying to also connect with them, right? You're trying yeah. to get like to understand what they like so that you can give them and have a good relationship with like totally. your audience, I think, right? Mm -hmm. So you're just trying to see like, oh, if they like this, then I'll add this and more. So then they're happy with it, right? Right. It's a good, it's a good way to approach content in general. Yeah. And I guess more of what I was really saying was like originally – I fell in love with creating music mm -hmm. and I wanted to do what I could to promote my music, mm -hmm. which was like my true passion, which was like hard to just let go. But I realized everything that's doing so good right now is I'm like, why would I stop doing it? Why aren't you doing music right now? If TikTok is you used to be called musically, like it's yeah, the biggest ironically. platform for music. Why are you not putting that in the um, back of your cooking videos, bro? Because like you're it just doesn't work with the cooking videos. You know what I mean? Like it's the, especially with cooking videos, like viral cooking videos, you got to use like classical music or like really. I, I would be a dog if I was you. If you you're getting some famous people in your shit, they're gonna watch it regardless. I would right. I would double it's, down it's on more myself. Of, it's more of that focus. So it's like I don't think I'll be able to bring back music into my career until I have accomplished what I'm doing. Oh, so you're not making you know music I mean? right now. You paused it completely. Pretty much. Okay, it's still, okay, now I understand. Now if I, understand. I had more free time, yeah. I mm. would uh, dabble with it, but I don't. So it's like, I, if I'm going to do it, i got to put my all into it. Yeah. Um, you, but my, in general, sorry, go ahead. No, my mom, you, you, the way you're describing is what my mom used to tell me when I, so how I started was doing these skits online mm. and I, I loved them. But it wasn't what like my dream was. Of course. And my mom goes, you should know how blessed you are that you're not bussing tables to of get course. to where you need to be. So what I always joke around with my friends when we're creating things to get to that next level, I go, we're bussing tables. Totally. So my thing is, say you're done bussing tables mm -hmm. and you have 15 million people watching you at any given moment from anything that you're going to post. You have your audience. They love you. They, they want everything to do with you. What is something you would then do with your art? That's an amazing question because that, like, to me, that goes so, that's like something that I won't, I feel like I won't have access to until for like another like five years is having like 
to, for me to say that I don't feel like I have that much of a platform to be able to like really impact people isn't as far fetched as it might seem because of all the numbers. Yeah. But like to think about the difference of the influence of like the rock Johnson yeah. mm -hmm. and me yeah. mm -hmm. is like people fucking love that guy. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like the same thing with, with Kevin Hart and like these big actors and big musicians, they have so much power in their hands to help people yeah. and to spread messages. Mm -hmm. But like for what I do, it's like I'm fucking cursing and cooking and, and like mm -hmm. just making people happy. Like what I'm doing is I'm bringing smiles to people's face and I'm, I'm altering people's life. Like I've had so many people, I've had TSA people tell me, bro, like you, like I've had the worst days ever and you made me smile. You know what I mean? Like random people everywhere. That's great. But like, I can't wait for the time to come that I've done my acting. I've done my modeling. I've done the music. I've done it all to be able to like gain that respect from everybody. Kind of like I was mentioning with the, the art where it's like, do these other things to get people to fall in love with like who you really are and like mm -hmm. what you can really do to then gain the, their respect enough to open themselves up to you and to really listen to you. And I feel like having that, that level of influence is what really like changes the world. And it's, can it's, I give you a little advice that I wish somebody gave me when I was like sure. literally in the same lane as you? Mm -hmm. Um, I remember I have a screenshot. I look back at all the time. Uh, I grew like 500,000 followers every five days oh on, when I was doing the Facebook stuff and oh, then wow. the Instagram stuff. And I had that same mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait to think about that when I get to a level of respect. So that way my art doesn't get disrespected and all that stuff. Yeah. And, you, and, I'm, and I'm really happy you brought up Dwayne The Rock Johnson because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter two of them. The difference between Georgie when he was killing and getting millions of views a day and then Dwayne The Rock Johnson when he's just on like WWE or then trying to become a movie star mm -hmm. is Dwayne didn't wait for the day for other people's approval to be a superstar. He knew he was. Right. And I fell with that and I watched friends of mine fall off because they waited too long. Yeah. Um, it, there's, a, there's a saying, it's like uh, good things come to those who wait, but not the ones who wait too late. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't want you to be waiting too long because like I said, bro, we watch you. We love you. The TSA people love you. I would invest not money, but time into something that you ultimately want to sit on one day mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Of Do you course. get what I'm saying? Of course. I think that is going to happen naturally mm -hmm. because, um, I mean, what I'm doing right now has the potential alone to become the one thing I do the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Easy. Yeah. So I that's, agree with you. that's where it's sort of like, that's my, that's my focus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, that'll always be my focus. Um, I'm not gonna, I can't disclose what, but like I'll be doing things on TV soon and like TV's whatever, even though it's like not a lot of viewership, but it's still no, it got, notable. You, you got, you got um, there. You got to the right, mainstream. Right, right. Things are coming. Yeah. Things are coming. And like, um, and I'm, I'm entering into a different level of this space that I'm in and I'm happy to be there. Um, but also it's not going to stop me from, I'm, I'm so comfortable with where I am in the movement of where it is that I'm not trying to limit myself to take things on. Like I model, I'm, I'm signed uh, with an agency in Milan and New York and LA. And that's the type of thing where if I get an opportunity to shoot with Armani, I'm packing my bags, I'm going and yeah. I'm doing it because yeah. there's not a lot of people in my space that are doing that. So it's like, mm -hmm. Kind of goes back to the same thing of like just kind of this level of respect that I feel like is like the only thing I really have a desire for is sort of just the respect of like you, you're making, you're doing it different. You know what I mean? You're, mm -hmm. you're not doing it the traditional way. Um, and that's kind of where I'm trying to incorporate the other things in, like take an acting role if I can. But like, obviously if it comes time that it, like a main, it's going to be really hard to balance everything at once. Of course. Like yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't be in a movie and, and make all these videos. Uh, maybe, but it's like, we'll get there when we get there. But I'm, I sort of. And like riding on that mentality, but in a very relaxed way, mm -hmm. and and not good. You're not stressing yourself out. Yeah. Not at all. Like I'm, you're I'm, enjoying the process. Like I said, exactly. There's always a way. Like, exactly. You know? And I'm, by the I'm way, you would, you would be it. very shocked to know how that is the hardest thing to manage, from freaking Kevin Hart <laughs> levels to lower levels of people that are just starting. Living in the moment and enjoying oh, the process yeah. is the oh, yeah. hardest task to him. I never stop enjoying myself through the whole entire journey. My new thing now, as crazy as this might seem, is like I want to like vacation every like two weeks for like <laughs> for like two days, like yeah. three days, like just keep changing up 
the way of my movement, but that's like good. keep the same thing going. Yeah. But like, luckily I can film anywhere. So that's why I'm like, I was gonna say, that's soon. good content. Right. You right, going right. anywhere, you know? Totally. And it's like sort of just keeping, making sure that a, I'm surrounded by the, the people that I, that I really love and, and support me. Um, it's taken me a really fucking long time to build right now my team of three. So it's like, it took me three years to build a team of three. Um, and I got really, really blessed that like my best friend since I was in early middle school, who is the reason why I created content to begin with. We both were, were like doing psychedelics in high school and just like laughing our ass off. Like we could totally do that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like this is so obvious. Like, bro, that's our humor. Like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. And then like having those realizations is like a reason why I even started it to begin with. And like, we wanted to do it together. And then we had different roots. Like he went to, he went to school, I went to school, but like, you know, my parents are divorced. I had a little more wiggle room to be able to do this shit. And like, I have the fallback of my dad's restaurants and his dad's a banker. It's like, didn't really work out, but he graduated college. He's a year into, in, into his work. And, and then me and him, I, I got on the phone with him one day and I was just like, um, he told me how much he was got, he, he was getting paid from his job. And I was like, bro, He's like, please, like, I need you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I need this. I need the support. I need this help. Um, and since he's been working for me for like a month and a half now, it, like this like just happened recently. Oh, it's that's been awesome. The, it's been the biggest fucking boom ever. And it's wow. like, that's that felt great to be like, my team has now finally expanded to mm -hmm. three. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and like, and, and I say three and a half, four, because my sister also does help me. And she, like I said, is helping me with my cookbook which is something that I'm super excited for that's going to be coming out next year. Let's talk about it. That's great, yeah. Yeah, it's, if, if we could. Yeah, no, we can. Uh, is there's it called nothing, Betch? Uh, no, uh, thank God. I think the next one, I think the next <laughs> one will, will be Pasta Betch and it'll be like 100 pasta recipes or something fun. But um, it's actually a really cool concept and here I am like hungover in New York City like with the publishing company, like I'm at a meeting and uh, I'm on like no sleep. I'm like, I'm going into this meeting like raw. I got nothing going on. I'm just kind of like, Oh my God. Like they're going to be like, this is like, do, do we want to work with this guy? Like, holy shit. I went in there. I had stomach problems too going on at the time. I was like, wasn't feeling good. Like all this shit. You have stomach and issues, huh? I guess. I do I too. You're are you, I was going to say, you, you're the one to are you, a little bit. are you gluten intolerant? No, but like definitely lactose intolerant, you know, but not severely. It's weird. But, um, so, but, but pretty much I kind of out of nowhere, like sparked, in the middle of this meeting, I, I, I just, I'm so happy that I, I came up with the, the title of the book and the cover of the book and the concept of the book within like one second. And it was an original idea that this publishing company has never seen before. They did Joshua Wiseman, who's the biggest YouTube chef. They did his cookbook. Jessica loves him. Oh yeah? So his, his cookbook did number one on New York Times and it was, it was second top seller behind Barack Obama's book or wow. something by the publishing company. That's great. <laughs> something crazy. So I'm with the same publishing company and I'm super blessed to be working with them. Um, but I came up with this concept called concept. The cookbook is called, it's literally just called Italian American, but the cover is what makes it so unique because the cover is me like holding a dish, but the, the picture of me is split half and half of like half of this is half of it's like a background of backdrop of New York and half is this backdrop of like where my dad's from in Italy. Mm -hmm. So it's like combining the U S and Italy and me with the dish. And even half of the dish is the Italian version and half is the American, uh, American Italian version, Italian mm -hmm. American version. If you can try to picture that. So yeah, it's I like, love it. it's just split down the middle, but it's one picture, but it's, it's split to where it's like, half the recipes are Italian American and half the recipes are authentic Italian. I love that. Um, that's and that's the premise of the book is sort of just the idea of like, I grew up with authentic Italian food, but my mom is an American Italian and my dad's an Italian Italian. And, um, do they share their recipes with you in these books or they're like, get out of here, bro. I'm not giving you my, <laughs> Ooh, my dad, my yeah. mom. No, definitely. Definitely. Um, and I've got like, you know, recipes from my grandmother and like all these different things and sort of combining all of ours into one. So that's a, it's a, it's a process. It's a book, you know what I mean? It's as much as a book as it gets. So that's something I've been working on a lot. And, um, and that's something for next year, but I don't know where the fuck that's going to take me. And, uh, I also have a lot of like really cool ideas for like, I really want to do a travel show with, I don't know if you know, Nick DiGiovanni, the other chef, he's like Italian, uh, tall, really high quality, he, um, 
he is one of the biggest creators. He's almost at like 10 million on YouTube. And, Damn. Um, he he <laughs> just is. You know, they go to Harvard. Well, you know, I was a chef. Really? Serious? The boy cooked that Benihana's. <laughs> Are you serious? Not only did I uh, cook, but I did some tricks and shit, bro. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> right. Hibachi? Hibachi, baby. That's fucking sick. I grew I grew <laughs> up first uh, illegally cooking in my dad's restaurant at the age nice, of 13. Nice. Should have stripped his uh, license <laughs> oh. away immediately. I, I, don't, I don't think 14 was old enough to be a pizza chef in my dad's restaurant, right? Nope. <laughs> nope. That's, yeah, that's also illegal. Um, <laughs> And and then uh, then I worked at uh, Five Guys, no and, way. Then, and then I worked at uh, uh, ben, Benihana. Look at you! That's and and Benihana was the stream. first time I realized that I was like, oh, I could probably do stand up because these dude entertaining the people at the table. Bro, I mean, think about these people that like these. Like, I walked into this, you know, very cultured restaurant, and they're like, ching, 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 and they're just like yeah, catching yeah. shit, and I'm like, I can't do that, bro. Like, I don't know how to do that. So I would just tell jokes, and I had bits. Where like I would walk up in the very That was your thing? Like you weren't that nice with the... Nah. I, really? I was good at cooking yeah. and I was really good at making them laugh. So the manager of the restaurant... Okay, so just a little FYI. I was a little shit when I was a kid. I was very spoiled. I, I knew I didn't need a job. I only got the job because my friends worked there and I was bored. So like I went in there and, and you have to like train and then like two months after that they test you. The second week I was like, yo, let's just do this test, bro. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like if I make it or not. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I passed... And then throughout, I was, again, like, if you don't care about the job, you're going to say some crazy shit. So totally. I was singing to people. I was getting on top of the tables. Bro, I was so entertaining that other tables were tipping me because I was bringing up their table all the time. I was doing callbacks. Look at those them. motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, $100 <laughs> paper bro, airplane. Bro, the first time a rich dude handed me a, a $100 bill, I just oh remember God. being like, no fucking shot, bro. Like, you just gave me 100 bucks. I was here for like a little bit and I just made you laugh. What? Uh, but Where I, was this at? It's Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh, cool, it's on Frank cool. Lloyd Wright. It, cool. Yeah, Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah, it's Frank Lloyd, and um, it's it's right next to the Scottsdale Quarter. That's where I, I work. And you know, it's so funny. I used to tell, I'll tell the, I, the the owner. I was like, one day you're gonna because they put pictures of celebrities. I go, one day you're gonna fucking you're gonna put my shit up there. And he looked me straight in my eyes. He goes, No, the fuck, I'm not. <laughs> and I said, I was like, What? He goes, You barely could do this job. You think you could do that job? And I was like, Fair play. You know, you're right. <laughs> Uh, and so actually I have one more little funny story. Uh -huh. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm cooking and my, my friend, the one that I got the job because he was working with me uh -huh. was on this other side. So there's a table here and a table here. And what we did, uh, just to really grab tips, we fucking, and during lunch, we'd be like, okay, dude, at this point when I, when you hear ding, 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 then you put down your spatula. I go to your table and start picking up your table because we know each other's menus. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we're doing this, bro. And I switch. And he switches again. Now he's back on his table. And at the end, we were we we're gonna do it again for the cleanup part where he throws the rag. I grab the rag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I, you yeah, know, yeah. Through the oil, but <laughs> bro, there's uh the sh the little things at the end for people that goes to Benny Hanna's. They know it's a wooden thing. At the end, they do this lot. They go ding ding, and they like flip it, and they go ah. And for the kids, they pretend like they go ah, and the yeah, kids go yeah. ah, and they're like ah, you know. <laughs> bro, you just hear ding ding ding. Whoo, and I turn around and my friend's hand was so greasy. Dude, this thing, I'm not kidding, was this heavy. Flew and <laughs> smashed this six or seven year old kid in the nose. Busted his nose open. Just starts squirting blood. Just coming down. <laughs> I'm, so I'm like this. It's a this. lawsuit, bro. I'm looking like this. <laughs> right. I'm like, and by the way, he's now on my table. Right? Oh. The table that I was on. And he wants to switch back to his table. <laughs> and I, he looked at me, he goes, okay, do a switch. And I go, no fucking way, I'm switching. You fucking deal with that shit, bro. Oh my God. Dude, the manager comes sat. By the way, nobody's more savage than these people that work at Benihana's. The guy has a broken nose like this. And the guy's like, dude, my son's nose is broken because of your guys' employees. And the guy goes, okay, you know. <sighs> This is on me. The meal's on me. And I go, I don't think it's going to stop there, man. <laughs> I don't think chicken fried rice is going to help this guy's nose. <laughs> the meal's on me. You busted his oh nose. Oh, my God. That was Jeez. the second most embarrassed moment I've ever had there. Wow. The you first a chef. Oh, yeah, bro. The first I freaking, uh, the, you remember, they called me to the tables that are mad. So this table was 
waiting for three hours. And so, because we had backed up. Call you over for stand up? Yes. To, to entertain them? Yes. The, no. I, I swear to God, on everything that I love, <laughs> they would send me to tables that they were pissed because they know I can make them laugh. So I would say shit. I would get there, be like, what did you guys do? How do you guys have a Middle Eastern at a Japanese restaurant? And they just start dying. <laughs> and I get the, you know, I get the shit going. I finally, I put all of it on the table. I go, yo, guys, do you want the whole shit? You want me to put everything on and get the fucking shit going? And they're like, get it going, get it going. So I have everything, bro. They all got their chicken fried rice, their steaks. Bro, I'm literally about to serve them. Like they waited 45 minutes for me to cook this. And now I'm seeing their, their face finally go from like this to like, oh, finally we're about to eat, you know? Like Mother Day's not ruined, you know? Bro, pepper in the middle of talking and all of a sudden out of nowhere. <laughs> like just sneeze three times. <laughs> All over their stuff. Bro, I look up. I'll never forget this dude looked at me like this. She was like, no fucking way. This dude just shit on our food like this. <laughs> I look up to my manager because right before I put the pepper, my manager's looking at me like this, like, I'm so proud of him. You know, he's doing his job. And then I look back up and he's like this. <laughs> oh my God. Bro, do you know what I did? I'm not kidding. I didn't touch my spatula. I didn't touch the food. I just left. I literally looked up. All of them were like, <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know how to bounce back from this. So I go, one second, and I just fucking left. And then the, ma the manager goes, where are you going? Go back. I go, go back to what? What the fuck am I going to go back to? They're not going to eat it. I just shit on it. I can't clean it. No, I didn't come back. They had another guy come. And like they're like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got up and left. Did they have they, to pay they, for the meal? <laughs> he goes, look, he goes, ah. This one's on me. <laughs> this one's on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Always saves the day. Are you going to make a restaurant one day? A hundred percent. Are you going to have your dad involved in it? hundred percent. Let's go. Nice. Yeah. Where That's would you be? Where would be I'm actually doing a pop-up in LA um, in like Brentwood area soon oh cool i would love no to way. come yeah I'm, I'm gonna i mean i'll be i'll be blasting it um that's gonna be super fun i'm doing like a few pastas i'm gonna have my dad come out for it um i met this guy at the gym who did not look at me in the shower i was about to <laughs> and i was about to do a call back but i was like nah i don't want to cut her off <laughs> it's so good. good job i got you i got you um but this guy is super cool and and his uh he has this restaurant i think it's called like sunning sunning like middle eastern restaurant and it's a really good restaurant and he has like his mother's like bakery or something that's like across the street and it's like an empty space. And he told me that he'd totally be down for it. So I just, I'm going to like, it's going to be fucking hilarious. I'm going to order these, like this giant fucking Betch banner. That's like, that's like 30 feet or something. Just huge. That like takes over the whole block. And just going to, like, I've seen a lot of these like TikTok chef people um, do pop-ups and mm -hmm. like, they'll get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm trying to get like fucking thousands of people to like just destroy the whole fucking area and just like create some madness. <laughs> the guy goes, what the fuck, man? Oh, yeah. It's my <laughs> mom's restaurant. <laughs> I thought you were going to bring your friends, not the block. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's like ready for it. He's like, I want, he's like, I want you to, I want you to tear this up. Like, let's, let's blow them out the water. Um, so I'm doing, I'm working on that soon, but wow. that'll be really cool. It's going to be awesome. Where would be your dream place to open up a restaurant? Probably in New York City. New York? Next year, pops. My, yeah, I mean, my my dad, like he, I it was, he's all in Charlotte, North Carolina. But he, I always, it's crazy. Growing up, I always would be like, why don't you franchise? Like, why don't you just put it everywhere? And mm -hmm. it's, they're so good. And I'm like. Okay, you were I'm trying like, to get that money though. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> You're like, Dad, this is great, but let's expand a little bit. <laughs> no, you know what I'm no, literally. I was like, you could be so rich. And then we could be so rich. I mean, you. <laughs> yeah. He he's just he's such a he has his personal touch at all the restaurants. I'm like, now I get it. I'm like, you, you go yeah. to them every single day and people love you there. Mm -hmm. Since there, he's had customers that have worked uh, that have started eating at his restaurant when they were at their first job at like um, at like Bank of America in like 1997 and like now they're the fucking CFO or something like that and like they've been eating there since then mm -hmm. from like 30 grand salary to like 30 mil or some insane shit so it's like he, he just because he's been there he's that that personal touch yeah. is why I'll never pull some like Gordon Ramsay shit and yeah, open him, right? up a bunch of restaurants <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I want to have like one restaurant. Yeah. I want to live in the same city and I want to be able to go because I want people to be able to like meet me and try the food and totally. actually love the food. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's being made right. right. And, um, I'll never do a fucking yeah. ghost kitchen or anything like that because it's like, a good mindset because I mean like what makes your food good is that you're making it, you know how to make it specifically and make it good. And so, yeah, you make it too big, then it's just not the not same everyone thing. Everyone says like. Everyone's like Gordon Ramsay's burger place sucks and this and that. They're like, oh, it all sucks. And yeah. like, 
Like I, did, I just went to really Hell's coming Kitchen. coming after him, huh? You gonna box him? No, nah, maybe. Bro, it's tr- I, I used to make these videos at Hell's Kitchen in Vegas, like back when I just did not give a fuck. Wait, wait, you, didn't you do... Like, I did recently. I yes. made like a food review, but like this was me going and, and being like, Gordon fucking Ramsey. Like, you were supposed to come meet me for dinner. Where the fuck you at? And though it's crazy calling him out like, you piece of shit. Like, just being a complete fucking dick. I didn't even have a reservation. I, I wasn't even going to dinner. I was just outside the restaurant calling him out, talking hella shit. Like, 30 million views and shit. Like, they would blow up on TikTok. Yo, we're going. Of me. We're just, doing the same shit. Go, go. Go talk shit. I was just lying. I was like, you're supposed to fly in for dinner? It's 8.30. Where you at? And like, I'm just drunk on the strip. Like, just fucking, it was hilarious. But um, that's that's something I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing is, is opening a restaurant one day. Just because it's my dad's thing. And I'm like, and for him, he always he always tells me, he's like, you're doing, you know, you're doing everything I wish I could do. Because he's Aww. an immigrant and he, he came to the U.S. when he was like 19. And with his, he's one of five brothers. My mom's one of eight siblings oh, big Jesus. family um but it's cool to be able to like kind of live his dream and like do yeah. the shit that he wishes he could do but he he's must still be so proud do you ever rub it in his face no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but this dad, month, dad this look, look 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 he i'm born here yeah <laughs> look what happens where's your green card oh i'm sorry <laughs> well he had a restaurant like before he got his visa i was like this doesn't make any sense like <laughs> how can you open up all these restaurants he said, Bro, <laughs> it was like 2000 and like eight i was in like elementary school and I remember him like list like with the CD in his like car, listening to like like practicing for his test to become a citizen. And then I'm like, it hit me like a couple of years later where I'm like, how the fuck did you have seven restaurants <laughs> at one time in the 2000s before you had your citizenship? Yeah. Also, you can't even get hired. How do you have a business? They're all immigrants. That's the best part. Is like he worked like, around. He goes. This is how he answers. He goes. Eh, <laughs> yeah. Forget That's it. about it. Guy. They literally yeah. like like my dad will just he doesn't like say anything. He just goes up to the tables and he's just like, "How was everyone doing tonight?" And then they're just like, "Good. The food's amazing. Augusto, we love you so much. Oh my god, you're the fucking best." He's like, "Thank you." And like walks away. <laughs> and that's it. They're like, the hospitality, the, the service. And I'm like, he doesn't even fucking say anything. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. That's good. Vibe. That's good. I know, I know, you I know. when we walked into that Italian place and the guy came out? The, dude, first of all, like. Too much bippity boo. And bro, like, I'm like, fuck off. Bro, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, doesn't yeah. say, he doesn't say anything. He'll yeah, sit down, he'll put his arm around you. He's like, I'll get you a glass of wine. And then they're just yeah. like, we fucking love you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 15. I can't even. Open. Uh, you know, I had seven businesses before I was legal. <laughs> you did. I, I still don't get it. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. No, I'm kidding. Like very successful. No, 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 bro. Very you, successful you, you Italian You lit some people up here on this podcast. <laughs> you came in. There was sometimes you were saying shit. I was like, oh, he gonna give a fuck, dude. He's cooking up. I mean, it is what it is. It's like if that person comes at me, they can't. They like you ruined your fucking you ruined everything for yourself. I got your back, bro. You know what I mean? yeah. Thanks, bro. Yeah, he ain't he nothing but a bitch. <laughs> yeah, bro. Would you want to work towards getting a Michelin star? Ooh, good question. That would I feel like that's like a, that's a, a big side quest. Do you know where that co- came from? The Michelin star? No. So Michelin tires. Oh that, yeah. Okay, that, I knew I knew that, but I don't know anything else. But that's fucking crazy, right? Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck did they know about? Apparently Ooh. everything. But like, think about it. They only they had a map, and they're like, "This is a restaurant you should check out." Michelin star. And then it became so big that now restaurants are like, yo, like, give me that. So there's got to be some restaurants that don't deserve their Michelin star that have one. You know what I mean? That are just so shit. I, Maybe, but no, I mean, they probably they always do it. No, it's always a secret. It's a secret person. You know, you don't know that they're going to be there. Right, right, they right, come, right, right. They, they eat it. You know, you don't know. Yeah. Do, do you know tested. what a secret shopper is? Uh huh. You do? Yeah, I do. I used to work at a bikini store. So she'd be like, careful, because sometimes we get it, secret shoppers. And so, you know. Do you know, know what a secret shopper is? No. I'm surprised that that started because I only had one place where they had that. It was Diane's five Beachwear in Huntington Beach. <laughs> where are you all from? <laughs> why why <laughs> such a hard plug for no I don't reason? Know, because that's, I don't know what it is. <laughs> a, 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 a secret shopper is somebody who's paid to go there and they basically evaluate everything you're doing. Are you washing your hands? Are you talking to the customers? Oh. Are you doing everything? And then they'll, they'll note everything down. And if you... Well, I don't know how yours did it, but in five guys, if you pass at, at past the 90 something percent, we all get bonuses. Oh. Uh, really? Yeah, we no, all get bonuses. It wasn't like that. It was like we get well, bad it was, reviews. Or it something. was them. It was for them to be like, you know, like, hey, do really good. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because the restaurant um, and this dude walked in and he's just immediately like. 
That's at the restaurant? Yeah, the five guys. Five guys. So he comes up. He's like, yeah, can I get a, a cheeseburger? But what is that? And I was like, are you a secret shopper? And he goes, what? No, you I was like, straight up. I go, listen, bro, I'll give you 20 bucks right now. Give us, uh, give us 100%. And the guy goes, no, I'm not a secret shopper. I go, okay, dude, I'll give you 50 bucks right now. Just, I know you're a fucking, don't, and you're going to lose your job because I'm going to report that I knew it was you. So do you want the 50 bucks or not? <laughs> and the guy goes, okay, okay, I'll give it. Okay. And this, Wait, I gave him the 50 what? bucks. Listen, listen, passes us. We get the money. The next time it happens, I go, oh, this is a secret shopper. But this time the guy goes, I go, yo, are you a secret shopper? And immediately I go, because it worked last time. I go, I'll give you 50 bucks. And the dude goes, yeah. Dude wasn't a fucking secret no. shopper, bro. <laughs> I gave him 50 bucks and he left. And, and then I literally waited for like a week, two weeks ago. Where the fuck is our report? Everyone comes in. They're like. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, yeah. secret shopper. <laughs> 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 it just, it just keeps everybody. happening. Yeah, no, but I fucking. Uh, yeah, I gave him. Runs your fucking pockets. Bucks. Yeah. So I basically made money and then lost it immediately <laughs> right after. I got so excited because everybody was parading me, bro. Like, like even yeah, my manager was like, good job, dude. You know, this really makes me look good. And I was like, thanks, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately I fuck it all up again. Dude, it was such a pleasure to come and talk to you. I didn't come. You can. Thank you for coming. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, been, it's been such a pleasure and I'm excited to see your growth and see, you know, just keep moving, keep moving forward. I'm, I appreciate just, yeah, that. I love, I love the motion of life. If you are a good person, you That's know amazing. what I mean? Hell yeah. You have well, a good head on your shoulders and thank you. You guys you're really too. like, you know, have your values straight away with like the people that you're around in LA, which I think is really important. Totally. So. And it's you good. know, I'm, I'm, I'm one day we'll be in, I guess no one will ever be in the perfect situation, but always work closer or work harder to become closer to the perfect situation for you. You know, that's what I'm always working on is like get there. It, it'll take time to, to be super comfortable. And like, I'm always this close to wanting to just drop everything and just live on a farm in the middle of nowhere. And, and like, <laughs> and, and it's, just, <laughs> it's just this close mm -hmm. where it, it's like either drop the only fans and, and run away or, <laughs> or just keep working hard and keep dealing with the bullshit. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, working it's, it's, it's rewarding and I'm young and I'm like, you know, you're going to be fine. So <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm glad you're not exactly. stressing yourself out. <laughs> Smack some stuff. Not at all. <laughs> Fucking. My God. <laughs> These aren't working anymore. New prescription. I, I can't see anymore. Things. Yeah. I'm just, I'm losing it. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I feel great. <laughs> well, thanks for watching guys. Amazing. Uh, please follow him on all of his platforms where, where, where can they follow you? Just at it's QCP on everything. Every, can I ask you well, just before we leave? Why? Oh yeah, it's super fucking random. It was like my rap name. My best friend that's been helping me. He like on an Xbox party was like QCP because my nickname was Puka for no reason. John Luca Puka QCP. Lord knows QCP is the <laughs> name. But I always I always had the mentality of if I do my work good enough. People will just start calling me whatever the fuck I make my name. You can make your name fucking it's A true. dot B dot and it's going to work. A I did that B in dot. That's high school. Everybody kept calling me bitch. And I was like, that's right. <laughs> well, actually, that's funny because now everyone does call me bitch. <laughs> because every time people see me in public, bro, people will go, a hey, bitch. And I look at them and I go, really? And then they're like, no, not like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, take it easy. Like, well, you don't want anybody calling you a bitch. <laughs> crazy. You that's branded so it. All right. Thanks I for know. watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Take it easy.